and sent it to my wife and was just like, I might've done a thing, you know? And she was like, you gotta be kidding. And unfortunately I wasn't kidding. So then I had to figure out how to get all the gear out of the trailer, the bike all the way into the front of it and then repack the trailer for the rest of the tour. So. He is the one, he is the only Jacob Bryant. Golf clap. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> oh, is this is this the thing? This is I guess you... I, you said golf clap. I guess that's how golf claps. Yeah, sure. <laughs> What's going on, Jacob? How are you? I'm great. How about yourself? I'm I'm doing better now. I am so excited to get to talk to you and pick your brain. This has been like very exciting for me since I got to listen to your album that actually dropped like a couple days ago. Now that has to be exciting for you. Yeah, absolutely. It dropped Friday. Friday. Oh my gosh. That's, that's crazy. I mean, it's, it's like putting a new baby out into the world, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 13 <laughs> babies, I guess, if you count every track, but, but it's yeah. a lot of babies. Oh, there we go. So <laughs> Barstool Preacher, very awesome. So what can you tell us about this album? And I, I did read a little bit about the title of the album, but what, what can you tell us about it? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a, a little bit of a mod podge of, of all my musical influences. I mean, I've, every day listen to octane on sirius xm you know so i have a huge rock influence and then grew up in like bluegrass and old school country and also stuff like skinner and almond brothers and whatever so there's a little bit of all of that stuff i just mentioned on here which i'm super proud of because it is nice to kind of get a little bit of a change as you move your way through the record but um and yeah to mention the title barstool preacher was kind of my idea um of you know throughout the years I've kind of wrote songs that, you know, were hell raising, you know, cocaine raising hell, <laughs> doing stupid stuff type songs. And then I've also got a, you know, a softer side um, that was kind of from back in the day when I played in a church band and stuff like that. So there was a little bit of um, both of that going on, as you can see in the photo there, I've got, I've got a Miller light next to a Bible, but which is kind of a little bit sacrilegious, but I kind of liked that. Uh, I like that a little bit. <laughs> I mean, wh why not? Like it gets people talking about it, right? Well, I mean that, and I also, you know, regardless of what you're going through in life, I mean, I don't think God's going to send you to the gates of hell for a Miller light or a couple beers or going to a concert. So, I mean, <laughs> let's hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like, for sure. <laughs> well, that's exciting. And, and I think one of the best things about kind of where we're at in the world is things are starting to open up a little bit more. And mm -hmm. I did see that you are going back on tour. So that has to be very exciting as well. Yeah, slowly but surely, for sure. I mean, we have like 40 something dates in the works. I know we've only, um, I guess, released nine of them that are, uh, you know, completely under contract. No. <laughs> COVID restrictions and all that stuff that we've kind of had to jump hurdles around. But yeah, it's uh, it's slowly opening back up. And we're super excited to get out there and, and uh, bring this record to the fans as well as a bunch of the older stuff as well that um, I guess you could call fan favorites like Pour Whiskey on My Grave and some of them tracks we've had success with. But. Do you have a favorite song uh, maybe off your previous albums that you like to perform? And is there a song off your newest album that you're looking forward to performing on the tour? Yeah, um, the, my favorite from the last record is probably definitely Pour Whiskey on My Grave. I mean, that one's just kind of your typical biker hellraiser kind of song. And um, and I really love playing that one. And we usually end our set with it in the, in the crowd, you know, of course, waits for that moment because it's probably one of our most popular songs ever. But um, and then on this next one, um, I don't know that there's probably two that are my favorites off this next record. Um, Buzzards, which is kind of like comparing love to <laughs> buzzards eating a dead animal, which is, I guess, a little bit of the metaphorical side of me loving that one. But um, I, I noticed the Corey Taylor poster, so I love a lot of his <laughs> met metaphors too. So, but, but, uh, but yeah, buzzards and then maybe uh discount cigarettes. I like the honky tonk, like Dwight Yoakam Bakersfield vibe that thing's got too. I do too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I really like, like you mentioned kind of when we started that you're kind of this like melting pot of so many different <laughs> genres and so many different, you know, types of uh, styles and everything that that's really cool. Like, do you remember one of the first songs or bands that you ever listened to that made you fall in love with music or made you want to become an artist? 
Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I, I gravitated early on when I first started playing and I guess wanting to do it myself. Um, I was gravitating toward the, the Travis Tritts of the world, the Skinnards, the, um, Almond Brothers, I mean, that kind of blues rock country hybrid mix thing. And then, um, you know, the rock stuff kind of came in my teens. I've, of course, listened to Corey and, and uh, anything from Stuck Mojo to um, I, I was a Nickelback lover and a lot of people hate on them, but I love them. I love Three Doors Down. Um, my producer, Jesse Triplett, plays in Collective Souls. So of course, I loved them. But uh, but yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of uh, a lot of influence there for sure. So I, I think I've really just took the same amount from every one of them and just kind of went here I am. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I definitely want to talk about Jesse as well, because Collective Soul is like one of my favorite bands. Like it, it's it's a yeah. band that when I have it on Spotify, I can never skip a Collective Soul song, you know, like and also I have to mention, I like Nickelback as well. There's nothing wrong with that. So <laughs> how how did that happen? Like, what was it like working with Jesse? How did you two like come to meet? Yeah, I mean, mutual friends. Um, my buddy Josh Phillips that I wrote Sometimes I Pray With um, knew him. And then also uh, another local Georgia act, uh, Alex Hall, had done some work with him. And I would heard Alex's stuff and just really loved the production on it and what they did. And um, actually ended up recutting one of the songs that Alex did with him. But we kind of just got introduced through mutual friends and, and talked about, you know, working when he was off the road and trying to maybe do just a couple demos together to see how we worked and mesh well together. And then kind of uh, fell in love musically, you know, and, and, and it sounded exactly how we wanted it to. And, and we had a, we had a lot of fun making that first record and almost actually got it stolen from us. His house got broke into while we, while he was on tour and they stole all the, all the hard drives, all the tracks and everything from two years worth of work. But, um, luckily he was smart enough to send like where we were, um, at least the stems over to like a cloud or whatever. And, um, unfortunately we couldn't go back and edit anything because he sent it in MP3 format. So that record was never actually f mixed or finished or anything. We, we ended up having to master it the way it was after the, the thieves stole it from us, but it kind of adds to the story and, and it is pretty cool. It is certainly a story. How terrifying is that though? I wonder like, oh, I was, I was sick. He, he called me and he was like, are you sitting down? And at the time I hadn't quit drinking yet, which I've got my little non-alcoholic IPA. There here, you but, go. <laughs> um, but, uh, at the time I was Miller light heavy and, uh, and, um, anyway, he was like, are you sitting down? And I said, no, he goes, well, sit down and get a, get a Miller. Like, and he was going to tell me pretty much that our project was gone. And then he got to thinking about it and forgot that he had at least bounced them down to MP3 where we were, um, to give us a reference point. And we kind of had to go with that. Cause like I said, it was two years worth of, of work, at least almost probably almost three years worth of stuff. But. Oh my God. Well, thank goodness for the cloud, right? <laughs> Shout out yeah. to the cloud. <gasps> yeah. For sure. Oh my God, my heart just like, oh, I can't even imagine. Well, yeah. okay. Um, just to, whew, to to bounce around a little bit more. Um, we were talking and and I know you said you were from uh Georgia. So yeah. I, I was also curious, like, what was the music scene like growing up in Georgia? Was there a music scene? No, nah, I mean, there wasn't a whole lot of places to play at um where I'm from. I mean, I'm from a podunk little town. Um but I mean, you could drive an hour and a half south down to Atlanta and there was probably a scene there that I didn't uh, I didn't really uh, know of growing up. So, I mean, it was just kind of playing with your buddies in a garage somewhere until I got a little bit older and branched out and hit a couple mic nights and and stuff like that. And then kind of made the, the jump to move to Nashville back in 2010 and and kind of just kind of worked my way through that and. And now I'm blessed enough to be able to live back at home and then just kind of commute back and forth to Nashville for work when I'm, when I feel like it, cause I'm definitely more of the, uh, live in the woods type than, than the downtown. I, I love it, but I just love visiting it and I love coming back home. So you have the best of both worlds, Yep. you know, yep. But, but there's definitely something so special about Nashville. You can just like mm -hmm. feel it, right? Like, was yeah. Nashville always the place that you knew you wanted to gravitate towards or was there, you know, do you ever think, yeah, maybe I'll do New York or LA or was it always Nashville? Um, 
No, actually, I I started in a, a Christian rock band, um, not even as a front man, I guess, when we first started. And um, that was the first, I guess, exposure to like L.A. and New York talk and stuff like that. So I guess one of those could have been the thing. But I um, when I kind of stepped away from that scene and into the the country world, of course, it it's the mecca for that. And, and that kind of changed that that uh, that outlook for me. Fair enough. Well, I feel like you belong in Nashville. It's just, oh, it's such a beautiful city. There's, it's so rich with history. And plus, like, the barbecue is pretty amazing, oh, yeah. too, right? Ed, I mean, Edley's, Edley's, that's my uh, smoked turkey sandwich. Edley's? Style. I don't think Edley. I've been there. It's good. There's one on the east side and on, on the west end. So. Okay, next time I go, Edley's. Well, okay, since we are speaking about barbecue, I wanted to mention your Twitter bio says you're a wannabe grill master is this correct is this something <laughs> and so i i want to know about where you're at with your grill master process and what do you like to make and, and um, talk, let's talk food yeah i do love to cook um a little bit of anything especially if it's you know on a pellet grill or charcoal grill i'm not a big gas grill fan um i just think it has a much better flavor if it's over real wood and um, actually partnered up with this company called rec tech and they're super similar to like a Traeger or something like that. I just think they're better because they are better, but, uh, sorry, Traeger, but sorry, Rectech, Traeger, long, long time watchers. Yeah, no, you're fine. Yeah. Well, I'm not worried about it. <laughs> it's rec, rec tech 1250 will smoke anything Traeger makes, but, but anyway, so they, they came out and, and large with hooking me up with a smoker. And of course I had to learn a bunch of new stuff on it. So I'm always out there throwing some slab of meat of some sort and trying new rubs and seasonings and whatever. So it's, uh, it's just something really fun to do whenever you do live in the woods and there's not really that much to do. So I, you um, smoke some meat. So is it, a, are you more of like a dry rub guy or like, I, I don't know what the other opposition of that is. Both. I, I do both. Like a, a lot of times, like if I'm just doing a chicken breast, I'll use this stuff called Texican seasoning. A buddy of mine owns a company out in Texas called Texican Barbecue Company. And his seasoning is almost like a, I don't know how to explain it. It's like key lime, like citrusy kind of, almost like lemon pepper or something, but it's with orange peel instead of lemon. And it's amazing. But I'll just do that on a chicken breast dry rub style, just kind of clean eats and, veggies with that and then sometimes like last night we did rec Tech's honey rib rub on some chicken breast and then i actually base those with a bunch of different barbecues that i mix together and make my own concoction out of and stuff so i try to get i try to get fancy with it but it probably just tastes like barbecue chicken at the end of the day but it makes me feel better when i've kind of went through the effort of mixing a bunch of random stuff together yeah. <laughs> be a grill master now I'm, I'm a little behind i i could make chicken on the stove but i need to get to your level but also i wanted to know because you also posted a picture of some hot sauce so i want to know do those things go together or, or can you tell us about your love for hot sauce as well yeah i'm thinking of releasing my own um we're in the process of getting labels done for that um and i have some samples of it or whatnot but yeah i I love spicy anything, so it it doesn't matter if it's barbecue chicken or pork or whatever. I, I'm throwing hot sauce on it and and uh, making it light up the tongue a bit. Oh, that's, so is that something like when you're back on your tour soon? Could we possibly see some hot sauce on tour with you? Yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna have we're gonna have my uh, my my hot sauces, and then also I have a men's grooming line that's like cologne, beard oil, beard balm, uh, shampoo, conditioner, and pomade in two different scents with that too. Cause I'm, I'm a fragrance fanatic. I have like 150 bottles of different colognes. They, oh, that's <laughs> it. Just 150. Well, wow. It's actually probably more than that. I'm just guessing. <laughs> but, but no, they, uh, they, they call it being a frag head. My wife thinks it's ridiculous, but for some reason I took up the hobby of love and cologne and, and now it's like, a an, a, an addiction for sure <laughs> i mean it's not a bad addiction cologne's not you know so what what don't you do so you have hot sauce you have a men's line like what <laughs> what, what don't you do like, I, um, I don't do cocaine anymore i went from cocaine to cologne so you're there right you it, go. it is a much better addiction <laughs> cocaine to cologne oh Okay. I'm, gonna have to, like I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to write that song. That's a weird. I, I, I kind of like it. I don't know. Well, oh, I also um, saw that you are a fisherman as well. So I wanted to know: Do you have any memorable fishing trip stories? 
Yeah. I mean, I grew up fishing, um, a bunch with my grandpa, uh, my papa, Randy, he, uh, was a tournament bass fisherman and has trophies at the time when I was little, as tall as me and stuff from winning all these bass tournaments. So I just, I love getting in the boat with him and watching him bite the head off a of zoom worm and stuff. And I would be like, what the, you know, and like he would take that plastic worm and have me bite on it to taste the salt in it. stuff. So then when I would, I think he's the one that got me addicted to salt too. Cause even in high school, I would take those little white paper salt packets and roll it up and like suck on it in my mouth, maybe because it was like a <laughs> subconscious pastime or something. But, but yeah, um, tournament bass fishing, it ended up kind of coming into my adult life a little bit. I, I did that for a little while, um, on and off whenever I wasn't touring and super so, so fun. You're, so you're competitive then. Yeah. And I, I like to, uh, you can't, be the best if you can't beat the best. So I, I like getting out there and, uh, and, uh, just trying to, trying to do the best at everything I can. And of course I've never been the best at any of it. It's, it's just cool to have that, that goal and, and chase after it. I, I feel like if there wasn't a climb, it wouldn't be any fun. True that. True. Well, okay. Just to talk a little bit more music, something that is so cool was you got to collaborate with Luke Combs uh and oh my gosh that is so epic so what, what can you tell us about your collaboration and writing together yeah um we wrote out there on his first record and um that was really cool uh we were actually at my manager's house here in uh here in georgia and uh he and uh, james mcnair ray fulcher and me wrote that song and it actually was one of the ones that got him his record deal with Lynn and, and the people at 30 Tigers before he moved over to Sony. And that's kind of cool to know. And it got me my first plaque on the wall and all that stuff for having, you know, at the time a gold record. I'm sure it's however many platinums now, but um, I need to call and get my new plaques because I, I only got the gold yes. one right now. But, but, <laughs> but, get those uh, plaques, but, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, when we wrote it, we weren't thinking of plaques or anything. We were just being rednecks and drinking beer in, the, in a basement. And we decided that instead of writing in the basement, we wanted to go out there. And that was kind of the idea behind, you know, what we were going to write. And uh, it that song really kind of came easy to us, too. I feel like, and, and they can correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like it didn't take us but just, a, you know, a little bit to, to write that one and be done with it. Just because it, it was truth to everything we were, you know. So typically in your process of, of writing, do you have a process? Like, do you prefer to write lyrics first or melody or does it just kind of appear in your brain at the same time? Yeah, I'm more of a same timer um, with that. I mean, I, I know a lot of people sometimes they'll just have some words or something pop up and, you know, occasionally that happens. And of course, I'll try to hum some kind of melody to it or whatever. But normally I'm kind of just tinkering around on the acoustic or something and you know, humming something and then I add words to it that way and it all kind of just falls into place together. So was the guitar the first instrument that you picked up and have you ever considered playing any other instruments? That drums was the first one. Drums yeah. is first? Cool. I, That's I, awesome. I, 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 at least the first one I actually learned how to play. I, I feel like I had a guitar first maybe, but I didn't really take interest to it until later. Um, started playing at eight, but um didn't really like take it seriously and learn the instrument until a little bit later. But, but yeah, drums was really cool. Got to play some drums and some praise and worship groups and church and stuff like that. But it, uh, I was not as good at drums at all. So I laid that down. <laughs> okay. Okay. I mean, Hey, guitar is great. Uh, so before uh, you do a show or while you're on tour, out of curiosity, what do you like to do to like pass the time when you have a few minutes to enjoy a city? Yeah, I mean, we definitely get out and walk around and try out food. I mean, of course, me being loving cooking and stuff, we do that. And then if we have a couple hours or whatnot, I do. I love playing golf. So we'll go play some golf in a lot of these places. And OK, um, but uh, yeah, you wouldn't really expect that out of me. But, no, but, I do. Uh, I, I, It's like I would be more surprised if you told me that you didn't do something. You're like, yeah, you fish it, you golf, whatever. Yeah, you, you do it all. So. Yeah, I guess I'm bored all the time. So I got to find something new. <laughs> It's but, nice uh, to have hobbies, though. Absolutely, but yeah, that and then I'm I'm kind of a, of course, with Cologne, obviously a hoarder. So I, I like shopping in new cities and checking out new places, and you know, bringing uh, bringing something home from there, whether it be a little souvenir shot glass or a Harley Davidson T-shirt from that city or or whatever. So, 
Are you a Harley fan as well? I have two of them. Yeah. You do? Oh my god! I went on my first Harley a couple months ago, and it, I I had never been on a bike before. I'm sure my parents are watching, and they're like, "What are you doing?" But it, it was it was a it was an interesting experience. I was like hanging on through. I was on the back of the bike. I was not driving. I'm not there yet. But right. I lo I think Harleys are just the most beautiful bikes. They're gorgeous. Yeah, I grew up around them. My dad's always had them. My uncle was a motocross guy, and unfortunately, he actually passed away on a motorcycle. But you know, it, oh, I'm sorry to it's not that. it's not one of those things that kind of scares me away. It makes me feel closer to to them, you know, when I'm riding. But yeah, I got a uh, my first bike was a 2006 Dyna Wide Glide, and I still have it. I'm gonna save it and give it to my son when he gets six sixteen ish. Um, okay. I'm gonna just kind of put it up, not ride it much. But then I just bought. We played in Sturgis during the pandemic, and I went, I went in for a T-shirt at Black Hills Harley-Davidson and walked out with a 2020 Street Glide Special. So that's my uh, that's my new uh, uh, man toy that I almost ended up divorced over. Oh, no. <laughs> did, did you drive home on the new bike? No, no. We, we had more oh, tour man. dates. We had more tour yeah. dates to do. So I, I actually just <laughs> – I literally went in to get my dad a T-shirt and a couple, like, signs and stuff, and – I took a picture of the bike and sent it to my wife and was just like, I might've done a thing, you know? And she was like, you gotta be kidding. And unfortunately I wasn't kidding. So then I had to figure out how to get all the gear out of the trailer, the bike all the way into the front of it and then repack the trailer for the rest of the tour. So it, uh, it somehow made it home, uh, without getting tore up. Thank God. But yeah, that thing's my baby. That's I man. And I bet <sighs> Sturgis, I like it's it's on my list of like something I want to do is like go for mm -hmm. bike week to Sturgis, even though I've right. only been on a bike one time, but maybe by then I'll, I, I don't know. I just feel like there's just so much good music happening. Good people. Yeah. What What is the atmosphere like over at Sturgis? Everybody loving everybody. I mean, I'm sure there's, you know, a drunken fight or something at the campgrounds at night and whatever, but I mean, there's everybody thinks the biker community is just a bunch of people beating each other up and, whatever but 99.9 percent .9 of bikers i know you know even that are in one percenter clubs are just big teddy bears that love the brotherhood of it and and so it's uh i i love it i mean it's it's i guess it's just because i grew up around it maybe but i i don't uh i don't see anything scary about it it's 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 really welcoming and a good time awesome well okay i have a game but before we get to the game uh i wanted to ask you know obviously like the past couple of years now have been a little peculiar, you know, no one really saw it coming, but music is something that can, you know, change our, our mood in a nanosecond. Yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to know if there was a song, whether it's of yours or another artist that you can listen to that can instantly like turn your day around or change your mood to be more positive. Yeah. Um, man, lately it was uh, jelly roll dead man walking because, um, I I only knew of him as being like a rapper and then he's doing this rock thing now. And I heard it on octane. And at the time I was deciding to quit drinking and whatever. And like, when I hear that song, it kind of was the song that made me decide to stop. So it's, even though it's kind of a darker song, it makes me like, man, that's the song that made you get better. So I, uh, that one definitely helps. And, and then I guess if I had to pick a second, it would be a uh, survivor by Scott Stapp. Awesome. Great songs, man. Wow. Okay, cool. Well, all right, Jacob, <laughs> we have a game. So okay. this is a game of would you rather. There is no wrong answers. It's whatever okay. you think the right answer is, is the right answer. And if you want to elaborate on why you pick something, you could do that too. And if not, that's fine also. So let's bring up the game of would you rather. The oh, first right. one, would you rather go back in time and perform with Johnny Cash or go back and perform with Kenny Rogers? Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash? Yeah. Do, do you have a, a favorite uh, Johnny Cash song? All of them. <laughs> no. Um, I, That's the correct answer, yes. Yeah, yeah. Ca I mean, Cash is he's just a badass. I mean, period. Period. All right. All right, here's the next one. Would you rather... Where is the next one? Pause. Okay. There we go. <laughs> write a concept album based on Nashville barbecue or write a concept album on Nashville sports teams. Uh, no offense, Nashville sports teams, but it's barbecue for sure. <laughs> it's definitely barbecue. Fair. Do, do you follow any of the sports teams? I, I don't. I'm a diehard 
Braves fan and Atlanta, you know, of course the Falcons haven't been, you know, the greatest lately, but I mean, we got the Braves world series champs and Georgia national champions. So I think, uh, I, I think I can't, really speak on being a huge Tennessee fan in, in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> yeah, bar- barbecue it is. All right. Yeah. Here's the next one. Would you rather Ooh, have a writing session with Willie Nelson or have a writing session with Chris Christopherson? Oh, that one's super tough because it's both of them, but I think I got to go with Willie. Willie? I think yeah. I got to go with Willie. I don't know why, but Chris Christopherson in this picture is giving me the dude, right? Like he looks like <laughs> the dude in this picture. I am a little confused. Are we sure no, that's Chris? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I just, they're both so talented, but I, I would just, for some reason, I'm not the biggest smoker and never have been, but I think if I was at a writing session with Willie, I'd have to partake. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that, that's the obligation, but all right. All right, here's the next one. Would you? rather cover a song from the first band you ever saw perform live or cover a song from the first band's album that you ever bought? Uh, be from the first album I ever bought. Yep. What is, what, uh, what was it? Brantley Gilbert, Modern Day Prodigal Son. Okay. Yeah. All right. So here's the next one. Would you rather ooh, co-headline a tour with Dolly Parton or co-headline a tour with Martina McBride? Dolly. Um, I actually had the opportunity to open for Dolly at the Ryman um, a little while back and Lee Greenwood and a couple other artists. Um, but yeah, Dolly for sure. I, I think Dolly's just so badass and she, she comes from nothing and became something and it reminds me a lot of myself you know, I, I grew up super poor and absolutely nothing and, and made what I am today myself. So that, that I think she did that. And that's, that's awesome. She's like the one, it, you know, I'll, I'll say celebrity um, that is so uncontroversial that like, I yeah. feel she could bring the world peace, you know, like if yeah. someone's <laughs> going to bring world peace, it's Dolly, you know, Dolly for president. Yeah. Dolly. I, I haven't had a chance yet to go. I've been in Pigeon Forge, but I didn't get to go to Dollywood. Have, have you been? Yeah, I actually have. Um, right outside of Dollywood a long, long time ago, they used to have some singer competitions and stuff like that when I was super young and thought that those things were going to make me, you know, uh, I guess the fast way to where I am now and all that stuff. So, yeah, I got to experience Dollywood and Gatlinburg right next door and all that stuff. And we still we still go to Gatlinburg. Um, to this day on vacation a decent amount. So oh, amazing. All right. Here's the next one. Okay. Oh, oh we, we know this is a big debate. And so we want to settle it here. Flats or drums? Flats. All Flats. day. All day. Okay. It's less, Any... it's, it's less work. It's a shunk done. What? I haven't mastered the, the shunk done thing yet. Well, I, I mean, it's a or, mess for me. Or you can do the, you know, kind of peel it in half and then double it up but i don't know the drums the drums do have a little more meat but i don't know flats for me all day long and they got to be they got to be crispy and wet not the slimy skin on them oh no 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 i don't do slimy no mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all right here's the next one would you rather <laughs> ride cross country on motorcycles with bruce springsteen or ride cross country with steven tyler Steven Tyler, for sure. I'm a huge Aerosmith fan, so that one, yeah. Have you ever gotten to see Aerosmith live? I have not. I want to, for sure. I feel like they're still going. Like, oh, I haven't seen them not. yet either, but, oh, man. That would have been I, I'm so upset because the Rolling Stones just did, like, their final tour um, wow. down here, like, right across the street from where I live, and I didn't get to go, but... Man, I got to see Aerosmith before they go on their final tour. You know, they, they always say they're retiring and then they come back. So, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like Steven Tyler has looked the same since I was a kid. So I, I think he's still going to rock out for a little while. Same, same. All right. I think we got one more. This one we kind of talked about a little bit, but let's see. Would you rather <laughs> create a line of beer oil products based off of your song titles or barbecue sauces based off your song titles? I feel like you have both, right? But 
Uh, kind of. I mean, my beard oil products, I do have one called Southern Outlaw, but uh, I do actually have one that is a song title of something that I cut that's coming out on my, my hot sauce. It's Hot Mess, uh, Georgia Hot Sauce. So, so yeah, that uh, I have to go with the uh, the sauce on this one. All right. The sauce it the, is. The well, sauce. the sauce. Well, <laughs> you survived. Would you rather... And your answers were amazing. So before we do wrap this up, Jacob, any final thoughts you want to leave us with here? Any uh, more information you can tell us about your album, your tour, your videos? We want to know everything. Yeah. I mean, the the tour, we touched on that. I mean, we're going to be going all over the U.S. Um, we have, of course, the dates you can see here or what's confirmed right this second. But there's, like I said, over 40 on the first leg. And then we're going to try to do probably 40 more in the fall. Oh um, but as soon as we get all the contracts completely done these of course will be updated on all my socials um which you can see right there at jacobbryantmusic.com we have all the links to my tiktok which i'm new to so bear with me on there but um uh, i'm not the best uh dancer so but <laughs> i'm new as well i don't get it at all so i, I have to use the effects that like make you sway and stuff <laughs> But, but yeah, um, so the tour is a big one. The new record, of course, um, we charted at number three on iTunes and we're still trying to push that thing. Um, so definitely go grab the record, iTunes, Spotify, Apple Music, Pandora, um, anywhere you purchase your music. Um, and another cool fact, we did print vinyl on this record. So if you want a vinyl, it's also available on our website. And then also if you're like, kind of more popular mom and pop record shops you're going to find it there as well um and then outside of that man just be good to people and uh, i hope music helps you especially my music in some way shape or form and uh let's just be good to people and and uh, somehow make the world a better place man that's oh, man i i couldn't agree with you more one thing that i wanted to tell you because you literally already do it all you golf you ride you fish <laughs> i feel like your next thing that you should do okay Listen to me now. Okay. You should do audiobooks because your voice is like so soothing to listen to. I want to hear you just like read me anything. Like, I don't care what it is. You, I feel like you could deliver me bad news and I'd be like, yeah, but he said it so nice. <laughs> so, so today is your last day, but it's uh, going to be okay. <laughs> I feel great. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying if you want to add something else to your repertoire. Uh, audiobooks I, I would be i'd be game with it i, I do want to try my uh, my hand at acting or some kind of voiceover of some of some sort at some point and I've, I've had people say that for a long time but um i really want to get on the show yellowstone so if nick sheridan sees this call me okay we'll tag him in it put it out there putting the energy out into the universe T taylor uh, sheridan i said his name wrong of course he's gonna call me now <laughs> Oops. Well, we'll edit. We'll, we'll, we'll do an edit. Uh, before we let you go, we're going to go over our upcoming guests that we have coming up, I guess, going into next month already. Oh, my goodness gracious. So on Thursday, we have our friend Aaron, who is a paranormal investigator. We also do Comic-Cons together. Thursday, uh, the 27th, we're welcoming back Clown Fest. And then on Tuesday, February 8th, we have Christopher Lee Parson. He is the voice actor. He is the voice of Junkrat from Overwatch. But uh, Jacob, thank you so much. This has been such a blessing. Thank you. And congratulations on all of your success and your new album and your tour. And, and I hope I get to see you on the upcoming tour. That'd be so great. Yeah, absolutely. And if you get a chance to come, make sure you uh, reach out to, to my folks and let them know you're coming so we can leave you all some tickets and, uh, and uh, get you back to, to say what's up. And hopefully we can do this again sometime. I appreciate you having me. And, oh my gosh, of course. It's such an uh, honor. Allowing me to partake of my bubbly and and all of that good stuff. I'm trying to get used to this whole sober thing. So uh, d doing it uh, sober is it makes me feel like I'm boring, but hopefully I wasn't. <laughs> uh, you are far from boring, my friends. You, you you are far from boring. But thank you so much, Jacob. And I guess until we meet in person or until we meet again, I want to wish everyone a wonderful rest of your night. And we'll see you guys on Thursday. Bye, everybody.